So I'm Don Bosco Durai. I'm the co-founder and CTO of our private setup. A little bit about myself. I was also the founding member of the open source project Apache Ranger. Um, I've been working with uh, helping uh, Databricks in designing the access governance for the last few years. was very much involved in the Unity Catalog uh, implementation also. Um, so we work very closely with Databricks to make sure that uh, partners like us can extend it. Not just us, even I say you guys can also build on top of it. <coughs> So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk very briefly about Unity Catalog because I know you guys are familiar with it and then I'll see talk about how Private Sara is building things on top of it and some of the things if you guys have any question I can more than happy to answer. Uh, and Private Sara we also announced our governance for AI. Uh, I can briefly touch uh, about it and if you guys need more information I will be available after the talk I can go in, in depth. So. Uh, a little bit about the private setup. Uh, we do centralized access management, uh, both for security and access for large enterprises. Uh, so we do three things. One is we discover and tag sensitive data in the cloud, whether it's in Databricks or S3. And these tags can be used for encrypting uh, field level data in S3 or in Databricks columns. Right? And then we also have access um, management, where you can manage the policies um, using private setup, but what we really do is we push down these policies into Unity Catalog and Unity Catalog does the enforcement. And we have built uh, apps on top of it. So we have the governed data stewardship which simplifies how you can manage the policies using Unity Catalog. And we also uh, introduce AI governance which does the governance in the data breaks and similar um, uh, uh, cloud. Okay. So uh, Unity Catalog was sort of announced almost two years ago and has come a long way from now. Um, the primary goal for Unity Catalog was to centralize uh, the meta store and user management and those who have been using for Databricks for a long time you know that managing uh, policies in Databricks was pretty painful. Every workspace had their own users and their own meta store and you had to go and literally manage all of them. Um, with Unity Catalog one of the good things they did was they introduced uh, a central a meta store and then you can have catalogs and you can manage the policies all from one place. Uh, now they also introduce fine grain access control. What that really means is now you can set policies at the column level and can do dynamic masking. So similar to that you can also now do rollover filter. You can set uh, predicates on a table and for the given user it will automatically enforce it. So. Uh, to give a little bit of um, detail about this, on the left hand side what you're seeing is how you can manage um, dynamic rollover filter. So essentially what you're going to do is you're going to create a function and in the function depending upon the user or group you can attach a predicate. And this predicate can be as simple as a value in the same column on the table in a column or it can also do a lookup. And when you attach this function to the table and whenever the user runs the query, this um, predicate will be automatically applied dynamically. So this is pretty significant now because without this, uh, we, Privacy and a lot of you guys might have been creating secure views on top of it to filter uh, rows out of uh, because of compliance reasons. On the right hand side, what you are seeing is the uh, dynamic masking. A very similar concept. You create functions and based on uh, different uh, criteria. Um, depending upon its sensory information, you can actually write, uh, return a different value than the original one. Okay. So, uh, so coming to enterprises, uh, one of the biggest uh, challenges is scale. Right? Most of you guys have multiple um, line of businesses now, and within the same line of business, you have different personas, data engineering,s and data consumers and data analysts, right? and you have multiple workspaces and catalogs and tens and thousands of um, tables and you have different workloads like scheduled jobs and so So one of the challenges with this one is now even though Unity Catalog provides you all this behavior, uh, capability to do set the policy at the table and column level but you still have to manage all, all these things, all the various tables and volumes and everything. Mm -hmm. 
And now when you start looking into from the compliance point of view as an enterprise, and it's not just about managing access control on the table, but also meeting certain compliance requirements. If you're GDPR and CCPA, uh, what rows you can see, you have to enforce it dynamically. So you have to write the functions and it can go into a pretty big, depending on how complex your, your policies are going to be. Right? And if you want to start uh, enforcing consistently across multiple systems, then it becomes an additional challenge. So that is where uh, uh, Pravasara comes into play. So what we have done is we work with Unity Catalog to make sure that the, all the, um, whatever the grants and, and rewards are, are available as APIs, and we have built on top of it a layer which is like a governed data stewardship. So instead of trying to set the policies at the table level, now you're going to set the policy at the data set. And this data set can have tables from multiple database and catalogs, even different services like you can have a database uh, database SQL, and you can use this to give permission to different personas, so you can for different purposes. So if you have, a, uh, say, a data set for uh, clickstream, so you can give read and write permission to data engineering team. And then also you can give it to a data analyst or data consumer, but when you do that, you make sure that they cannot see personal information depending upon what purpose and role they are using it. Okay? So, so what we are doing right now is depending upon the purpose, you can give the permission. And then we, we before Unity Catalog, what we are doing is we are translating these uh, policies directly into the table and pushing it. And in some cases, we are also creating um, uh, secure views. With Unity Catalog, what we have done is <coughs> uh, we push the policies into Unity Catalog. And then Unity Catalog goes and does the enforcement in real time. Now, the advantage of this one is like, since the policies enforced at the lowest level, uh, you don't have any performance challenges or anything. And if you want to see anything, uh, you can always go to Unity Catalog and see what sort of policies are there. Right? Uh, where, where we bring in uh, all the uh, advantages that you don't have to now write all these complex functions and attach to tables and columns, we do it for you. And from your end user, your business user point of view, the data stewards, they also don't have to worry about it. All they need to do is just add user to a data set, and if there are thousands of tables, automatically all the policy will, the user will get access to all the, uh, all the tables. Similarly, if you add a remove table, it will uh, immediately grant and rework accordingly. So that simplifies the process. So the, what we have done on the user experience also, um, most of the uh, users are the data owners and the data stewards. So we can pull all these uh, data sets from your catalog and put it into ours, and then you can just set the policy out there. Or uh, there are APIs also available for doing that. So this is uh, a GDS. Um, uh, I'm just going to briefly talk about um, uh, our new offering, that's AI governance. Uh, one of the biggest challenge with AI governance is um, Unlike traditional ML, the models can have actual physical data, and within generative AI, the data can come out. So if you have trained your uh, data, you have fine-tuned your model with PII data, uh, and there's a higher possibility based on the prompts, you may be, uh, the users may get PI data out. Right? So what we have done is we built an entire abstraction on top of it where whatever you are, whenever you're fine-tuning or creating models, we can scan and tag them. And this models, what we are doing with this is like now you can set policies around it. Like once you know you have PI data, right, now you can say which um, users or group can access. So if you have a HR confidential data or a sales thing, you can say, okay, this users can access this model. And within this model, how they are going to be accessing it, like if you are asking a PI or data for a PI, depending upon the person role, we can deny, just like what you would have done in the traditional database tables, you can give access to a table, you can give access to a model, and similarly, depending upon the role, you may actually give access to all the rows in the table, or you may uh, redact certain columns. So this is what we are doing out here. So once you set the policies, right, right then we can enforce it, then we have an entire um, uh, uh, data analytics behind the scene, 
which gives you a full observability who has access the model for what purpose they access it what pi information they sent to the system what pi information came out how much um, what was allowed what was denied and then based on that you can make decisions and say how you want to share the model uh, for wider range and we to, just to complete all these things we also have the entire um, auditing thing so whatever you're accessing it we log it what a response uh, that comes out of the model that also we log it so that depending upon the owner of the model they can see and see how the models are getting used okay. so this is a high level of mine uh, how many of you guys want to see a demo on the gds or you want me to open for questions i'm open for uh, who wants demo who wants gds uh, who wants the questions uh, who wants demo just raise your hand okay <laughs> Uh, which demo you want, GDS or this one? GDS or this one? This one. Okay. So, so here what we have done is we have scanned all the models, we have tagged them. So this generally the models are from your enterprises. You might have created the model um, from various different uh, ways. You might have created, used a foundation model, you might have fine tuned on top of it. Then also you might have used embeddings on top of it for real time. So we know at any given time what a model contains, what PI data is contains. And these models can belong to a different line of businesses. Just like what you're going to do today, you have database and tables, you have different models and that can be used for different purposes. So now you can set the policies, like let's say for the sales Intel, you can set the policies who can access this particular one. So I have a few users out here. So, so this is Sally, she's part of the sales team. So she's being part of the sales team, uh, she has access to the entire model. That means she can really ask any questions and she can get back anything. So she can say, okay, tell me uh, uh, some basic question which doesn't have any PII information. Okay. So what we are doing behind the scene is um, we have our own governance LLM which looks into the question, sees whether this question, whether the user can ask the question or not. So based on that, we give the response. And if she wants, she can go ask for PII data depending upon the context. So you can say, I give me the contact information for this uh, account. Since she is part of the sales team, she will be able to see all the information. And she can even uh, send in PI data. She can ask a question about a certain customer or customer name, and she can get it. Right? But if, since this is a, a sales model, there's a possibility that even marketing and some other team wants to have access to this uh, model for different purposes. So some of the questions which doesn't have PII, uh, based on policies, we, we can allow them. So, uh, since Mark is part of the marketing team, he can ask a question which doesn't have uh, any PI data. Uh, he can also ask questions, uh, like the same question where Sally asked, say, give me some contact information. So what we are doing out here is based on policies, we are looking into what sort of question they're asking and what the response is. Based on that, we are automatically redacting data, or PI data, which the in this case, marketing cannot use, right? So the, the, the person name is redacted, the phone number is redacted, right? And if, um, if it's asking, if it's entering any PI data, uh, our model is just pretty fast, will immediately say, okay, you're not supposed to give any PI data into this, into the prompt, will reject auto, uh, immediately. So similarly, um, uh, there are certain models, uh, uh, like, like say, say, you have uh, something like a HR confidential, which is supposed to be only for the HR team. Um, in this case, um, you can't even ask a question. So in that way, you can actually start creating guardrails around your LLM models, the usage, and based on policies, you can control it. And we, behind the scene, we keep track of everything that goes on, um, and we can. Uh, uh, give full observability how many was requested for, how many PIs was sent in, how many were rejected, masked, similarly what came out, uh, how it has been used, and we have a full audit trail saying how your uh, 
your models are getting used within the company, uh, what have been getting denied, what have been allowed, what have been redacted. Okay. So I'm just going to pause here for a second and our booth is just across out here. I'm more than happy to take any questions. Thank you.